Boxing Gyms, G-E-M-S, Boxing Gyms. Check it out, study some of them videos there. The guy's phenomenal. His name is Ryan, I'm telling you. All right, you'll pick up a lot of knowledge. There. Fight fam, smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification. Class in session. Hector elected to fight with the low lead hand for the entire fight. In the closed stance, a low lead hand and controlling distance are typically synonymous. At mid-range or inside, the low lead hand clearly provides an opening for your opponent's most powerful punches, the back hand. It was pivotal for Hector to control distance versus Tank if he kept his lead hand low. So Tank's strategy was to stay relatively patient in a high guard and walk Hector down since the only barrier to success was range. In spots, Hector was controlling distance with footwork, which afforded him countering opportunities as Tank would reach with the back hand. However, Garcia would succumb to the pressure and eventually give up his control the distance. Under a minute left here in the seventh. There's been some really, really to get proper leverage behind his shots. Oh, there's Once the distance was closed, Hector had a few issues to deal with. In the pre-fight film study, we talked about Hector Garcia's lack of head movement and lack of defensive responsibility. Hector either keeps his head on the center line while defending and attacking, or he will slip and pop his head right back up to the A slot. We guesstimated that Tank would be able to take advantage. Note Tank's head movement at mid-range compared to Hector's lack of head movement. Do that with Tank Davis. It was a straight left body shot. Boom. In some sequences, both fighters would step inside with low lead hands. Instead of Hector being physical with his inside controls and more specifically physical frames that disrupt Tank's balance or at least take account of the back hand, Hector would come in soft and leave Tank's back hand free.
four knockouts for Tank Davis. No knockouts for Hector Gar Garcia. is fighting at close distance, Oops. not allowing Javon to know that he has a guy. In the pre-fight film study, we also talked about Hector probing or jabbing mid-range, which he paid for. Tank started level changing, causing Hector to probe mid-range and down, which left him wide open in spots. With the boots analysis, I spoke about the problems with habitually moving your back foot first to move forward, but I also said high-level fighters use it all the time to set traps or set up back hands. Tank shows us a perfect example to the end of the fight. Tank started shifting his weight on the lead leg, then the back leg, mixing in a back foot first shuffle or step and keeping his weight on the back foot. Slicker than it looks here, Tank's upper body and weight is distributed over his lead leg to throw the uppercut. He then back steps first while rolling his upper torso to the back leg. He then completes the step with his front foot. Since fighters don't typically look at feet, due to the roll to the back leg, his head didn't give away a distance change, but positionally, Tank is now a half step closer with his back leg loaded. This sequence is basically what ended the fight. Ultimately, the lack of control and distance, then Tank's head movement and Hector's lack thereof decided to fight. Give me your thoughts in the comments section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share before you leave. Peace.